Okay, well, um, when we talk about logistics, we, we cannot um, uh, separate that from security as well, because it's, we're talking preparedness of INEC, we're talking about uh, uh, the things that they need to do before and during election and even after election, and security is a very integral part of it. Uh, we have joining us uh, Mr. Augustin Ega from Ibadan. He's joining us. Augustin Ega, are you there? Can you hear us? Good morning and welcome to the program. Everyone yeah. Okay. I know that you are itching to go to your uh, polling unit to vote and all that. So let's just quickly do this. How would you assess the, the level of preparedness security wise for this election, beginning from where you are in Ibadan? I think from what I can see security wise, uh, they are very prepared. The security wise, they are very prepared. Uh, the civil defense are on top of it with the Nigerian police. And um, we also have the military giving back up to the Nigerian police because they are the primary supervisors of the elections. And as I said, you cannot really count the numbers of police because some of them are undercover. And um, period to this day, they have been working undercover to gather intelligence about every polling unit. Uh, of course, you know how for, uh, security they work in their own ways. They won't tell you what they're doing. But I can assure you that right now, they are the first people I've been able to cite in some of the, the, the very close pulling bullet uh, boots around me here. I know that some of them have been around there. Uh, and I'm sure that the level of preparedness from the police or from the, from the security agencies is, is top notch. And we'll receive the best that we expect from them. Talk about security. Um, uh, security agencies is what they have done to keep us safe. What should the people know at this time? Because they are going out to vote. They are going out to 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 perform their civic duties, and they want also to uh, pre uh, protect their votes and everything. But how can they do this and stay safe? Well, uh, today, like uh, we said earlier, it's not the day for anybody to go there and campaign. There are strict rules that guide us today. And so as a citizen, as you go there, there's no time to wear this. Today is not a day to wear branded T-shirts of any political party. That's the first thing. That's the first red flag for any citizens that will try to do that. And uh, the citizens need to be aware of uh, vote buying, because I, I know some of them have really prepared with some bags of money to, 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 to buy conscience and people to sell their conscience for money. I think those who are going there should be very, very careful. Over here, I see the streets are a bit empty. The, the streets are empty. I can see security vehicles on the street moving. Uh, that shows another level of prepare. So the, 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 the citizens that are going to vote, they should know that violence can erupt at any polling booth. And um, I advise that where they have some gatherings that you don't understand, you should not be a part of that gathering. Uh, because they will have intra and uh, inter-party clashes today. My party, my party, my party. They know themselves. Even if they are not putting on their branded T-shirts, they all know themselves and they know the mission that they are there for. They, of course, there will be some, uh, some uh, elements, uh, machineries that have been hired just to create violence in those areas. They are not really there to vote, but their own is to commit criminal activity. And so let everyone be aware that there's some people who will be moving with dangerous weapons, some light weapons that will be uh understand and then that's why you need you don't need to get uh, involved in any open confrontation with anybody and they should be very very uh alert that some agencies especially the media the civil defense the nigerian police and even the military have made provision for all emergency numbers they should not leave their homes without having this emergency number including their family emergency numbers and so that if there is something that relates to a media the media need to know quickly get the shot get the evidence and then forward to any of the media organizations as a backup a backup to defend any claims that you have in any polling booth and monitoring if you still want to if they still want to remain and then monitor their vote I think you should not, they should look, stay, look for a safe place and stand, and then see and monitor the process. It's not something that should involve argument and fighting, because if that erupts, of course, the INEC, they know what to do in such kind of uh, pulling boots, and the police will be actually be there to arrest anybody that will create violence in that area. Those are the few things that I have for anyone going out today. Okay, um, I mean, just as uh, we allow you to go cast your votes this morning, Let's, you know, look at the capacity now. We, 
Nigeria is pretty excited about the deployment of uh, security personnel, 400,000 according to Usman Baba, uh, for the selections. And then you look at it, we're anticipating that 87 million PVC collectors, I mean, those who have their PVCs, will go to cast their vote. Not also forgetting the fact that for over 200 and, uh, you know, 211, 206 million persons as a population. Do you think that this number can do justice to ensuring peace and order in the entire uh, federating unit, especially where votes will be casted? Of course, they, 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 this, this, this 400,000 to 87 million persons apparently who will go out to cast With their votes. 30 to 35 percent voters turn out in the last five cycles of elections. Yeah. So it, it, it's very it, it's very possible because it's not the Nigerian police only that is doing this. In fact, before these elections, they have had series of uh, they call it training. Uh, some of this training is their joint training. They call it joint operations. When it gets to this moment, there's what they call joint operations, and they're setting up a project called intelligence-led policing. Uh, in this case, they will gather strength from other law enforcement, including DSS. DSS will never tell you how many numbers of personnel they have. And so if you, are, if you are counting and looking at only the Nigerian police, I think we'll miss it. I will begin to, to think that they are not ready. But from that is why you see the Nigerian, we know that the Nigerian police are the, the, the primary contact in these issues, but they have other law enforcement working hand in hand with them. So I'm sure that uh, from what we've had in the past, we are definitely going to get, we are definitely going to get results from them today. Okay, uh, I think we can have let him go. I would like to reconnect with you if it is possible later on when you're voting and you're seeing uh, what is happening security-wise. As a security expert, whatever we're asking you, we'll always be asking how the security situation is and what can be done to douse the tension if need be so that we can also relate that to the people who are watching us right now. So thank you for the time being, uh, for being there, Mr. Augustine Ega. All right, thank you, Nyamgul. I'm actually in the heart of uh, or your stage, which is a pardon, and I'm sure that I will monitor and I'll get in touch. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. Okay, uh, right now. Oops. Almost 430 multidisciplinary between the police. You must remember mm. that the total number of operatives in the Nigerian police is not even up to 400,000. So they are shaking with uh, civil defense, they are shaking with some. Uh, members of the armed forces, you could see mm. the footage you showed earlier that literally the, Mopo, uh, the military police were doing a kind of deterrence parade. When we were young, they used to do that uh, <laughs> as man of war, uh, you know, but it, it was a form of deterrence parade on an arterial road in a city. Boys, these are the military police operatives if you want to. So I, I should think, and given the fact, that the totality of the 80 something million PVC holders will not turn out. We, exactly. In most liberal democracies, even in countries where it is uh, mandatory, you, you seldom have a 100% turnout. No, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's normal. Uh, I probably learned that way back when, if you have to research, academic research, and then you probably have questionnaires. So you, let's say you have 100, and you're going mm. to sample them. You're not going to get back, you know. You every, everything you've sent out. So you're not going to get back. So that's given. But the point is, this entire force, we, we need to look at the facts the way they are. We need to look at it the way it is. And, and if, is if, if we have seen, I mean, because you and I can agree that there's been a lot of tension. I mean, there were also speculation that this election this would is, be postponed. This I mean, is, people believe. This is one of the, this is one of very few liberal democracies on the face of the earth where you have everything locked down on the day of election. You, you should factor that in. No. Because I am here because I've been invited by a media house. And I understand. If I wasn't invited by a media house, if I was found on the street, a young boy would treat me shabbily. No. And most people are sitting there behind in their houses as, as we speak, beyond just going out to cast their votes. No, but, but, but I also hope that you, you get where I'm coming from. I mean, it's one election that a lot of people, there's been 
so much fear, worry as to whether we this always election... always tend to do that. Whether, yes, this, they, whether this election we, was going to hold. I mean, speculation as to having an... You know, we always tend what to do you. that. And that's but, one but, of the... but if you look at the pockets of violence that has erupted, we're not even talking about the violence prior to 2023. We're talking about the recent violence as regards the non-availability of the Naira, uh, whether the old or the new Naira, that has been an issue. Even where you were sitting was under threat some days back, and but not for the swift intervention of the military uh, men who came through. I'm, I'm sure that it would have been a disaster. So I'm just trying to say that. Relative to what some of us know as the political history of Nigeria, this is a joke. I'm telling you, my yeah, sister. Yeah. Look, if you know if you know where some of us are coming from, and as students of Nigeria's political history and electioneering history. This is a comedy. I'm telling you, comedy. And, and you see, but because we now live in an age where social media, mm. we, because we live in an age where social media has taught responsible media like your organizations, before people like you say something, you have layers of, you have layers of, of editing. Is it true? Somebody will go and do the fact check. Is it coming from the right source? Somebody will go and do the fact check. On social media, people instinctively post. Now, and more so added to that is the, is the organic danger of the echo chamber that, that social media provides. That is why some of us are very circumspect. When, when we were talking earlier on about uh, about somebody's uh, about access roads to somebody's village, I said reportedly, reported because for all we care, I do, I, I have not sent a reporter there. I have not, uh, I have not. So at this juncture, I just want us to be a bit uh, positive, not so much careful, overplay, careful. Careful, careful and circumspect in how we portray. Because look in Lagos. They said some people campaigned, and when they left the campaign ground, uh, one or two persons were molested in the Lagos that I grew up in, <laughs> eh, during the Second Republic, that somebody, somebody whose uh, vehicle was molested, bad enough, nobody should encourage violence. But relative to what the political history of Lagos had been, I'm going to comment in here. <laughs> Okay, we just got an update from uh, the tabloids that uh, NSCDC vehicle carrying election materials to Lagos has crashed in Abuja. A Nigerian security and civil defense corps vehicle conveying election materials from Abuja to Lagos crashed uh, yesterday um, on the election eve. The accident reportedly occurred at the Giri Roundabout Bridge in Abuja. The vehicle was also carrying operatives of the NC NSCDC to Lagos. In a video on a, a newspaper, Punch, uh, particularly, people are seen rendering help to pick up papers suspected to be electoral materials littered on the ground. Also in Ayeto Rack Center, uh, the Akoka in Shumolo local government area looks like voters are ready. Those are the reports that we are getting right now. But uh, that means that there is more problem for Lagos. If the material I was wonder, to come. I wonder uh, the veracity of that this thing is a bit iffy for me. And you know why? The reason is that the chairman of INEC said about four days ago that elections materials were sitting pretty in the central bank's branches across the country. Mm. Indeed. Why did it come from Abuja yesterday? Through a vehicular yeah. this thing that NSCDC operatives were supposedly with. You see, when, when some of us get reports like this, I, I didn't ask Bolaba, but you know what? The chairman of INEC said important and sensitive and non-sensitive materials were sitting in the vaults of central banks' branches across the country. Mm -hmm. And that from three days ago, major news organizations like yours and others like yours were reporting wrecks, resident electoral commissions of state going to collect those materials. materials yeah. Oh, and in, in the backdrop of those reports, how would I then reconcile NSCDC vehicle ferrying Lagos. elections materials for Lagos, 
leaving no, no. Abuja yesterday evening with operatives of NS NSCDC. My, my brother, at this juncture, my journalistic persona is telling me, Bola, keep an open mind. You know, there was an accident. We see pictures, but the details of the responsibilities and roles of the persons in that vehicle and any material seen on the ground don't quickly buy the Okay, we'll, that, we'll that's responsible journalism. We'll, we'll it's still, different from social media. Yeah, we'll still be looking out for updates for from uh, the tabloid that supplied that. Uh, that's what they seem to uh, believe. Oh, you said tabloid. Yeah, you said tabloid. That it's, supplied. It's not. It's not. It's not. No, I, I, and I like the idea. Yeah. You said tabloid. Yes. The word tabloid, where I groomed my journalistic teeth. You know, where I cut my journalistic teeth. Uh, the word tabloid speaks to the fact that they don't do uh, substantive. Uh, journalistic investigation before they, they publish. They publish more to get very <laughs> sensational. But but when if you say uh, if you say at no. Okay. Well, yeah, we're we're getting a lot of reports uh, from very many um, places, and at this time we can only, like you said, you like the word reportedly. This happened here. This happened here. We've had that one from. The point now, there are so many other newspapers that will be carrying a lot of things. When we bring it to you, it is still subject to investigation. And like you said, let's take it with a pinch of salt a little bit and all that. But what we're talking about here today is, is the election day. And everybody wants to go out and vote. How confident are we that when we go there, we're going to meet the materials, we're going to vote, everything is going to go seamlessly and all that. In spite of the fact that we are looking at the shortfalls as well, we are trying to also encourage people that today is the day, no matter what, let's try to do our civic responsibility. Today's election, we are hoping, will, will be better than the option A4, which to me uh, was, so, was, so, was so great. But we keep referring in Nigeria to the good old days. And that shouldn't be. We should be moving forward and all that. We have beavers, for instance, now. Do you have that much confidence in the beavers that is going to make us surpass the successes we had in 1993? As one of the voices that agitated for uh, the intensive use of technology in our uh, electoral system, I am one who is, who is um, confident, very confident, that this round of elections should turn out uh, far better than what we used to have. You see, technology, the good thing about technology is that um, um, it, it gives you, it gives you even, look, I, I usually use the example of the pronouncement of the elections petitions to Buna in Oshun as my best example. You know what? Even when there was failure, because it's easy to track the digital footprint with technology, it was easy to see the inconsistency between the document that was initially issued by INEC to the complainant and the so-called synchronized package that INEC wanted to, to use to justify the victory of the winner. Because technology gives you a terrain where every nano footprint can be measured. And when you measure something against what should be a standard, you will either see consistency or inconsistency. So it's easy to, to, to judge. We know that in technology, you know, is gigo, garbage in, garbage out. But the good thing about garbage in, garbage out is that once the result is not meeting with the, with the desired result, you will then track what caused the garbage, or what, what, what caused the garbage output. So I am sitting here now wanting to believe that this round of elections will be far better, far better than we've ever had, even with the use of card readers in those days, because this is the first elections since we've been having elections in Nigeria since 1924 that would say, put your hand on that holy grail. And that holy grail has a biometric recording of either your fingerprint or your iris. So 
if Bolaba did not go to the polling booth, if anybody, the first election I partook in in Nigeria, the first election Bolaba partook in, in Nigeria in 1983, when I got to my polling booth, Malole Malole, want to in, <laughs> what that means is go back home, go back home. We have used your vote. They cast my vote for the ruling party in Lagos then. Alaji Latif Jack on this re-election. They told me that was the first time I was eligible to vote. You know, they said, oh, Malole, Malole, we, we have used your vote. <laughs> but, but today, that will not hold. You know why that will not hold? Because there would have to be an acknowledgement by technology that I applied by my, by my biometric identification to activate my right to cast the ballot. Mm. It should be better. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.